Are you tired of tracking time? Do you feel like hourly work is just holding you back? Maybe you're even being penalized for a client being late to respond? Or just by you naturally getting faster the more you do it? That's the worst. Well, freelancers, you're not alone. Today we're going to explore why hourly work sucks, what you should do instead, and at the end we're going to go into some rare cases where hourly may just be your best bet. So make sure you stick around for that. I personally ditched hourly around 2019, 2020, but funnily enough, two of my current contracts are in fact hourly because the client insisted and I thought, why not? Let's try it for a change. And that's kind of where the idea for this video came about. Since I am currently working towards making those two clients into fixed price because I do prefer that. So I will also talk about in this video how you can do it yourself if you currently have either hourly contracts that you want to move to fixed price or if you're talking to a prospect that's just insisting on doing it hourly how you can try and convince them to go to a fixed price rate, which in my opinion is the best. But first, here's why hourly sucks. Because back in the day, I was a big fan of hourly. I didn't know any better. And it would have been a tough job to convince me otherwise. So I'm gonna try my best to tell you why I changed my mind and why you should too. So the first thing I think is arguably the worst is you have to remind yourself to track time every time so you have to remind yourself whether you're doing it through the upwork tracker or you're using a third party tracker like toggle which is the one i used to use back in the day so you have to remind yourself that oh before i start working i need to turn the tracker on so i get paid for the work i'm doing and i don't know about you but Oftentimes I would just start working and half an hour later I would be like shit I forgot <laughs> to turn on the tracker and then what I would do in case the client allowed for manual time I would try to guesstimate how much time I had already spent and that's not always accurate so you may be underestimating it you may be overcharging the client which I wouldn't want to do either so it kind of sucks for that reason. I don't know if you can remind yourself every single time of turning on the tracker. Collapse to you, but I couldn't. Also, the second thing is you just can't possibly predict how much you'll make in a month. And on that same note, the client cannot predict and accurately prepare for how much they'll be spending with you in a given month. And please remember this because it will be helpful later. Another thing that I hate about hourly work is you'll get penalized for the simplest of things. You'll be penalized if you're waiting for a client to respond. So for example, if you delivered work this week to the client and they take a week to respond back to you, you just lost a week of no pay because you didn't track time because you were waiting for the client to respond. That sucks. Also, you'll be losing out on money on days where you're feeling extra productive. Especially if you're doing creative work like I'm doing most of the time, it's like sometimes you're just on a roll and you can do everything much quicker than usual. Uh, the opposite is also true, but it's like, it's annoying because you shouldn't be penalized for being good at your job. It should be the opposite. So yeah, it's just not, not worth it. And also on that note, it's not just when you're feeling extra productive. With time, you'll naturally get better at it. So in a normal job, you would think, okay, the better I get at it, I'll get a raise. I will get paid more. But in this case, if you are working hourly, the better you get at it, the quicker you'll get. So <laughs> the less you'll get paid. It's ridiculous once again. But yeah, as I told you, if you do have that current client that does prefer hourly, here's how you can move them to fixed price. Now, remember what I said before, the client just can't possibly predict how much they'll be spending in a month. And like, again, if you're on a productive day, they may get a discount at the end of the month. But on that same note, if you're being slow for some reason, you're not feeling creative or you're having a bad day, they will be penalized, they will have to pay you more for you having a bad day. That just doesn't sit well with me. The same way that 
I don't think we should be penalized for being quicker. I don't think the client should be penalized for you being, you know, just sleepy someday or tired because you've been traveling or <laughs> whatever. It just doesn't make sense. You should totally remind the client of these facts. Present it so it's beneficial on both ends. Like, do you want me to be penalized for being quicker? I bet you don't. If you do, you're an asshole and I don't want to work with you. But on that same note, do you really want to get penalized if I'm not feeling it that day? If they say yes, I mean, sure. <laughs> Make your own decision, you're a grown-up, but I don't know. Um, that's just weird. That being said, I know a common issue may be, but Sylvia, how do I even begin to structure my fixed price rates? Like, it's much easier if you're a beginner, or at least when I was a beginner, it was much easier to decide on an hourly rate that I thought was fair. Spoiler alert, it wasn't fair at all. Do not do work at $5 an hour, or at least don't do work at for $5 an hour for longer than a month. That's a talk for another video, but how do you structure your fixed price rates? I think this is a million dollar question and it may be the make or break for you to take an hourly job or know how to convince your client to go the other route. And honestly, there's many ways to do it. You can calculate how much you'd like to make in a year or in a month and divide that by the amount of clients you think you can take on. But my personal preference, it's kind of a mixed with hourly slash fixed price. I basically take the hourly rate that I have in my head and just multiply it by the average time that it takes you to do a certain task. Now, I'm actually going to move you to my laptop so I can actually show you how I do this because I have a spreadsheet that I'll also have linked down below so you can get it for free and calculate your package rates. Let's go into that. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet that we'll have linked down below for free for you guys to download. And just please, as you can see right here, please make a copy before you see it. You just need to go to basically file, make a copy, and it will make a copy of the spreadsheet in your Google Drive. That being said, let's try to make one of my typical packages for, say, social media management. So the first thing when it comes to social media management, I would say, how long does each post take me? So usually an image post would take me between 15 and 30 minutes. Again, it's one of those things that can I do it in five? Probably yes, if I don't have to do a lot of research, but the average is 15 to 30, so I will say 0.25. Uh, that's like 15 minutes, right? So yeah, that works. Uh, so then I would say if it's a video, usually 30 to 60. So if we went on the lower side for this one, so 15 minutes instead of 30, let's say video post, one hour. And then let's say, Looking at data, so analytics, I usually spend around three hours a month, and then we would want to make this into, okay, how many hours of this do I need? So I'm actually going to create another column. Okay, so essentially this would add up to nine hours a week, no, a month. So total hours nine, and then the hourly rate would be, let's say my 85, and that would end up being a $765 a month package rate. But here you go, here's a easy way for you to calculate your package rates once you have those averages from your trial jobs. But Sylvia, what if I don't have any idea how long something takes me? I'm a newbie, I just started out, I don't know how long this will take me. Fair enough, that's why I wanted to talk about the rare cases where hourly may be the best option for you because I remember being in that situation like it was just yesterday. So if you're just starting out, it's totally okay to start with an hourly rate for your first client or your first month, but on that first client or on that first month, make sure that you're tracking time and not only that you're tracking time, you can be using Upwork Tracker but I recommend you get the toggle app that I mentioned before or any other sort of tracker and really select different 
projects or different tasks that you would do for this client and really track time and break it down on, for example, social media, how much time are you spending on creating content or ideating on content or engaging with the client's audience. All of that are different tasks and I think you should track time for all of those separately so you have a better idea when it comes time to create your packages. Also on that note, another reason why I think you may want to go the hourly route is if you're going into a new offering. For example, I've offered social media management for about eight or nine years now. So I do know like on average how long a regular post takes me, a video post takes me, you know, analyzing the reports at the end of the month, I kind of know that and I may take less or <laughs> more than that. But again, it's the average that I've found um, that I use to calculate my package rates. But if I were to start, say, doing web design, I would have no freaking clue how long it takes me to create a single page or a five page website. I don't know that because um, yes, I can create a website, but when I do, it's my own website. It's in my own time. I don't give a fuck about how long it takes me. So I would probably, in that case, if I were to offer a web design, which I don't plan on offering, but I would take, again, one to three initial beta clients to kind of, you know, track the time for the different ones because every client is different and I would average out how long it takes me to design a page and to create a copy and to whatever, uh, you know? So I could then create a package that I could then sell over and over again. And one other reason that you may want to do hourly is if the client's needs are just super varied. For example, if the client needs social, but they also need email, but they also need web design or whatever that floats their boat in order to avoid that scope creep you may want to go the hourly route just so you know you're getting paid for every single thing you do and if the client asks more of you you track that time you get that money because you've earned it but on that note what i prefer doing personally is having the main part say social media management be on a fixed price rate, okay? I know we're posting three times a week, five times a week, whatever it is. So this is how much you'll pay me for that. And if you need additional whatever, I usually add that to my proposal, my quote for them, saying here are the add-ons you can add on to your package. Usually I'll have a rate for if you want me to send one email newsletter, that's X amount more. If you want me to do engagement with your audience, that's X amount more. And then what I usually have, and this may be helpful if your client is really all over the place, if they want like social media management with a side of VA. Um, I often in those cases just say, here's my fixed price rate and any additional needs or any additional requests will be charged at my hourly rate of Again, let's use the case, $25 an hour. And are subject to availability because the client just can come out of nowhere and want you to do something right then and there if you're working for a different client. That would just not be fair. So protect yourself and use those little things if you think the client will be <laughs> a very varied one, which is not necessarily bad. It's only bad when they expect you to do more without needing to pay for it. Overall, just make sure you're setting up those boundaries with the clients so they don't take advantage of you just because you're new, that rhymes. But also don't be afraid to just say, fuck boundaries, I'm out. Like I did recently, here's why. 